I think op-ed pages are quite influential, especially in that they set the agenda. The kinds of topics, what, what appears in the op-ed pages of a, of a daily newspaper um, is what the country's talking about. The response to a column uh, tends to come in, in uh, in different media. So I do get email, although I get less email than I used to, um, mainly because there's also room in the comment threads online and there's also room on Twitter and, and Reddit. Mm -hmm. So the ideal would be um, a topic that is timely, which doesn't necessarily mean uh, that it's key to that day's news, but there's something in it that that would answer the question, why would we, we run this this week? Um, as opposed to, you know, last week or the week before. Timeliness will bump up a piece and, and make it something that we definitely want to get in. We really want to see a strong thesis, and I think that's something that a lot of beginning opinion writers have difficulty with. Really, a thesis has to be all the way through. It has to be stated, or at least hinted at, close to the top, and it's got to be something that underlies uh, the entire piece. There has to be an argument behind it, and there, have to be, there has to be evidence to support that. And so once a writer has all of that in place, with a nice voice, a conversational voice, uh, not too informal, active sentences, uh, you know, subject, verb, object as much as possible, not written in jargon as much as possible, so a little bit more interesting, possibly surprising, um, possibly contrarian, but not provocative for its own sake. So somewhere in that zone of being reasonable but not boring. The lead is very important, so uh, the first sentence, and definitely the first paragraph, is what hooks the reader and hooks us. People tend to, um, uh, give the background or the context first and then make their argument. It doesn't, it doesn't hook the reader at all to have a long prologue before you get to your point. But you have to give them something to work with, something that's going to make them say, hmm, I wonder. The, the best way to, to get my notice uh, when you land in my email inbox is definitely a timely topic. Um, so um, we'll be looking for things that are in the news that we know are of interest to uh, our readers in particular. So know your market, know the newspaper that you're writing for, or the website. But some reason why you're qualified to write this particular piece, uh, what your thesis is, and uh, when you can deliver and, and how much you can deliver. It's nice to have up at the top of the email, here's my name, here's why I know something about this topic, and here's the op-ed. I think that writers tend to forget about how important the little stuff can be to editors. Things like grammar and style and presentation. Um, it seems like it's it's not important and, and in the end if it's a great piece we'll overlook all of that. But I think it's important to remember, and I remember this myself as a writer, that there are fewer and fewer editors working on copy these days and so it goes through fewer of us. And there's hardly any such thing anymore as a dedicated copy editor who's going to go through and make sure that your apostrophes are in the right place. I think that's one thing that writers could, could spend a little bit more attention to and it's not even just grammatical errors but you know, if you're writing for a Canadian newspaper, use double quotes, use Canadian spellings and make it a little bit easier on all of us.